Welcome. We are back with Chapter 13, Lecture B, and this is going to be the transmission lines, which is going to be the nerves. So we're going to be discussing the uh, cranial nerves, which are coming out of the brain. And we're also going to be discussing some of the spinal nerves, which would be coming out of the spinal cord. And remember, both of these are going to be part of the peripheral nervous system. Uh, in this video as well, we're also going to um, talk about some other uh, characteristics that have to do with this, as well as their structure, and also how they're repaired. So our first slide here is on visceral and referred pain. And you may have heard of this concept before. It's a very interesting concept. And so um, the definition of referred pain is really just what it sounds like. It's pain that is visceral in origin. And remember that visceral is referring to an organ. And so there's pain which is going to be referred to a different part of the body. And the interesting thing about this is that there are pain pathways and also somatic uh, pain fibers that sort of travel alongside each other. So it's almost like the signals are mixed up together. And uh, this is very important for diagnostic purposes. One of the most important examples of this is going to be in the heart, as you'll probably come and encounter with uh, some time in your career. Oftentimes when patients experience side, uh, pain on the chest, specifically in the left side of the chest and traveling down the medial side of the left arm, and um, that is very going to be very indicative, indicative of pain in the heart, a myocardial infarction possibly. You can see some other kind of odd examples here of referred pain as well. Uh, one example is that the gallbladder could have referred pain in the right shoulder, but also where we would ex kind of ex expect to find the gallbladder, where it's located at. Some of these uh, sites are very normal. They're right over the location of where we would find the organ, like the urinary bladder in this example, but some of them are referred to other locations. This slide is showing you the structure and the classification of a nerve. So the first thing that we want to look at is the anatomy of a nerve. And there are membranes surrounding nerves. Remember that a nerve is basically just an axon. And that axon is surrounded by a connective tissue membrane called the endoneurium. And a good way to remember this is the prefixes. Remember back in uh, the skeletal muscle chapter, you learned that the endomesium surrounds the skeletal muscle fiber itself. Now the axons are bundles um, surrounded by the myelin sheath, remember, which is going to insulate them. And the bundles of axons are called fascicles. Again, a similar term to what you saw in the skeletal muscle system. And the membrane surrounding the fascicle is called the perineurium, which kind of looks like paraperimeter. And then finally, surrounding a complete nerve would be the epineurium. And this complete nerve would be like ones that we're going to be talking about coming up in the next few slides. So one of the largest nerves that you have in your body, the thickest nerves, is called the sciatic nerve. So the sciatic nerve would be surrounded by the epineurium, this important membrane. Now some of these different, um, remember I, I kind of characterize these as these nerves as wires. And these wires are going to be taking information to the brain and away from the brain. Remember when they take information to the brain, we use the term sensory, which also means afferent. But when we take when they take information away from the brain, the term for that is motor, which is also referred to as efferent. Now most of the times, these nerves are going to be what we call mixed. And mixed means that they have both afferent and efferent signals. But there's going to be some examples which only take information to the brain, and if that's the case, they would be purely sensory. For example, a cranial nerve that would be purely sensory would be the olfactory nerve. 
take sensory information from the nose to the brain. But others would be purely motor, and then many are going to be mixed. They're going to have both. Now, one interesting phenomenon of the peripheral nervous system is that these nerves can actually regenerate. And um, it all depends on where the damage actually occurs. If the damage occurs um, distal from the cell body, then there's a chance for regeneration. But if the cell body is destroyed, then unfortunately there is no chance for regeneration. And a really good example of this in the news is Peyton Manning, the recently retired quarterback from the Denver Broncos, a famous quarterback. He um, had injury to one of the cervical nerves, and so he didn't have enough strength in his arm to throw a football. But um, that axon actually regenerated, um, and it's very much like an inflammatory mechanism that you learned about back earlier in the semester with the skin. The first thing is that the axon is going to fragment, which is what we see here in number one. The second is that there's going to be an inflammatory reaction. There's a white blood cell called a macrophage that comes in, cleans out the dead axon, so that new axon filaments can be rebuilt. So there's a rebuilding process that happens in number three. And then finally, the axon regenerates, and there's new insulation that's actually reformed around it. So that's a pretty incredible phenomenon that happens. Our next slide now is showing some of these wires. So we're first going to start with the wires in the brain. And you should be able to name these. A lot of times there's mnemonics that you can use. Uh, there's one that's in your textbook. There's another one that I like to um, use, which kind of re relates to this class. And that mnemonic is O, once, one, and one would be for olfactory, takes the anatomy final, so the abducens would be anatomy, and then final would be the facial nerve, very, for vestibulocochlear, good, for glossopharyngeal, vacations for Vegas, and I'm going to write that up here because it won't fit in the diagram. And then for accessory we have R, and for hypoglossal we have happening. So if you can remember this memory trick, or there's others that you can look up online as well, just Google medical mnemonics, and there's a spelling for it which is kind of odd. So mnemonics, just memory tricks. There's others as well. But O once one takes the anatomy final, very good vacations are happening. If you remember one of those memory tricks, then you can remember the names of them in order. And then you just have to put the functions with the names. So our next slide is going to show us some examples of um, whether they're mixed or not. So first of all, you need to know if they are mixed or not. And if they're mixed, they will have a yes in both of these columns. Because remember, mixed basically means that they're wires that are going in both directions. So there's sensory input to the brain and also motor output from the brain. So the ones that are mixed would be cranial nerve 5. Then we would go down here to cranial nerve 7. And finally, cranial nerve 9 and cranial nerve 10. As far as the vestibulocochlear nerve, it does say that it has some motor fibers, but basically it's mostly sensory. And that should make sense to you because vestibulocochlear, while you may not know that word yet, it refers to the ear. So there's sensory information that begins at the receptors in the ear and goes to the brain. So it's mostly sensory. So there's four that are mixed, and the rest are either going to be sensory or motor. And by knowing whether they're sensory or motor, that can kind of help you figure out what the function of those different cranial nerves are. The last column shows which ones are parasympathetic. And we're going to talk about parasympathetic in chapter 14, but that basically means rest or digest. So you'll need to be able to figure out what some of these effects are. And they kind of make sense. 
uh, based on knowing what the parasympathetic nervous system does. So we're going to go through some charts, which you're going to see in your textbook. And these charts are going to um, show you a little more detail about each of the different um, cranial nerves. And we will start there on the next presentation.